The Tennessee Titans are not taking Brock Bowers. I'll explain why on today's edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. Let's get it. You are Locked On Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Rowland, Titans fans. Today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on to get started. I'm going out on a limb. I'm willing to say it. The Tennessee Titans will not select Brock Bowers in the first round of the draft, and they shouldn't. I'll explain why, despite comments from Brian Callahan that have people thinking otherwise. Also, the Titans do need to add some depth at the tight end position, and there are some guys in the back end of the draft who make sense. We're going to continue our Locked On Titans NFL Draft Preview Series and talk about those tight ends. And then finally, Traylon Burks continues to be a ghost, and it looks like he showed up out of shape once again. We're going to discuss all of that before I dive into it. Thank you for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen each and every day. Remember, Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content all year round, always for free. Make sure you get subscribed, stay subscribed. It's your team every day here on the number one Tennessee Titans podcast in the world. Shout out to my everydayers out there tuning in Monday through Friday. On Monday, I'll have another Mock Draft Monday, and I'll finally look at what it would look like if the Titans traded back in the first round. I know a lot of you guys will be excited for that. But as for today, again, Brock Bowers, tight end out of Georgia. And let me just say this, first and foremost, Brock Bowers is a good player. He's a great prospect. I think he's going to be a good player in the NFL. My conversation with you today and the conversations I've been having about Brock Bowers since draft season began are not about Brock Bowers being a bust or Brock Bowers being a bad player. It's different than that. So I think Brock Bowers, 6'3", 240, run after catch, can play a little slot, can play a little inline tight end. He can do it all. He's not a ridiculous blocker, but he's a willing blocker who shows strength. All right, he's a good prospect. And I think he's going to go in the top 15 maybe 10th to the Jets in the draft. Like, I think he's going to be drafted in the first round. But it cannot be by the Tennessee Titans. It just doesn't make any sense. We have talked about how great this draft is at offensive tackle and how great this draft is at wide receiver. There is no scenario. There is no circumstance. Picking in or sticking and picking at seven, trading back. There is no scenario that you could make for me where the Titans should pick Brock Bowers in the first round. If he's there in the second round, by all means, he's not going to be. He shouldn't be. He deserves to be drafted higher than that. So it's not even a conversation about the second round because he will not be there. He's like Magic Johnson. I'm not going to be there. You know what I'm saying? But with all that being said, the Titans cannot pass on Joe Alt, Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze, even if they trade back for Ulu Fashionu, J.C. Latham, Talisa Fuaga, there is no scenario that you can create for me other than all of these prospects vanish off the face of the earth where I would say, yes, take Brock Bowers. Here is the reality. Tight end is a luxury position. Running back is a luxury position. If you're good at wide receiver and you're good at offensive tackle and you're good at quarterback and you're good at edge rusher and you're good at cornerback, then sure, take a tight end. Guess which team is not good at those positions? The Titans. The Titans need another wide receiver desperately. The Titans need two offensive tackles. The Titans need another edge rusher. The Titans cannot afford a luxury pick in the first round. Taking Brock Bowers, you said, oh, he could play in the slot, blah, blah, blah. That's great but he's not as good of a slot-wide receiver as Malik Neighbors. 
So what are we talking about? Okay. So number one, I'm not drafting Brock Bowers, but some people, some people are taking a quote from Coach Brian Callahan and saying that it means the Titans are looking at Brock Bowers. And here's the quote from Coach Callie. He says, quote, we need tight ends. We only have three on the roster. We'll obviously take more than that to training camp. That's a position of need. Just in terms of the numbers. Feel really good about Josh Wiley and his development. Feel good about Chig and where he's at. We got two young players we're excited about. But obviously, three tight ends isn't what you are going to take into training camp. Guys, that does not mean people. I had people tagging me. You said tight end wasn't a need. See, you're wrong. You're an idiot. Buh, 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 buh. Wake up. Read the quote. He says that's a position of need just in terms of numbers. Coach Callahan wasn't saying, hey, we desperately need a tight end, man. We got to go get tight end. Buh, 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 buh. He's saying we only have three on the roster. Yeah, we're probably going to add three more before we go to training camp. Yeah, for our training camp roster where we have 90 guys. We need some more tight ends. That doesn't mean that tight end is a massive need. And I saw pro football focus has tight end as one of the top three needs for the Titans. If you lined up every non-special teams position, no kicker, no punter, no long snapper, every non-special teams position, tight end is what? Second to last? Behind quarterback? Like... What are we talking about here? What are we talking about? Tight end would be, besides quarterback, tight end is the least likely position that I care about in the NFL draft. Now, of course, I think that the Titans could stand to use a tight end late in the NFL draft. Late. I'm talking sixth round, seventh round, somewhere in there. Sure, you have eight picks at a blocking tight end late in the draft for depth purposes. Sure. But using this quote from Brian Callahan to try to act like tight end is a major need for the Titans and they're going to draft Brock Bowers because of how badly, like, you're just, you're taking a quote, you're not reading into the details of the quote, and you're making it into something that it's not. He literally says, just in terms of the numbers, this is a roster number situation, not a, hey, we desperately need a tight end. Also, Nick Holtz, the Titans offensive coordinator, gave praise to Josh Wiley. And said Josh Wiley has gained weight and he's going to be able to help them this year as an inline blocker, which means your traditional tight end hand in the dirt next to the offensive line. So if you have an inline player in Josh Wiley and you have a move tight end in Chickaconquo, it is not a need. Those are your top two tight ends. And even if the Titans add a tight end in the end of the draft, the Titans are going to add veteran tight ends or undrafted free agent tight ends because they need more than three tight ends on the roster. It does not mean that they're taking Brock Bowers first overall. It does not mean that they're going to take tight end anywhere in the first two days of the draft. So spare me with that quote. And please stop. Stop talking about Brock Bowers at number seven in the comments. Like, on Twitter, in my comments on YouTube, stop. Just stop talking about Brock Bowers. You are wasting your breath. He will not be a Tennessee Titan. Put it on my tombstone. With that being said, though, who are some tight ends in the draft that make sense? We're going to continue the 2024 Locked on Titans NFL Draft Preview Series talking about the tight end group, and there are some tight ends who do fit for the Titans and what they need late in the draft. I'll tell you who they are next. Before I do, though, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to level up your vehicle to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for with eBay Motors. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. 
Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guarantee fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Titans fans, let's continue today's edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. I just talked about Brock Bowers. He is not going to be a Tennessee Titan. Let it go. But there are other tight ends in the draft who may be Tennessee Titans, and I'm going to talk about them right now. At the end of the show, though, Traylon Burks looks out of shape. Once again, you listen to the coaches yesterday, he is not in a good place. So I'll explain all of that. But first, let's get into these tight ends because it's not a great tight end class, in my opinion. Not a lot of great options, but there are some that are good fits for the Tennessee Titans. As a reminder, Monday, Mock Draft Monday, I'll be doing the Trade Down Mock Draft for you guys. I know a lot of you guys are salivating to get your hands on the Trade Down, even if I don't like it. But diving into these tight ends, I talked about Brock Bowers. We all know about Brock Bowers. He's the only tight end who's going to get taken in the first round. He's the only tight end that should be taken in the first round. But the next tight end that I want to talk about is Ben Sanat from Kansas State. Six foot three, 250 pounds. He is a good receiving tight end. All right. He is a good receiver. He's a willing blocker as well. He's willing to block, but he's not a great blocker. At his size, six foot three, 250. I know that's huge compared to like me. I'm like 5'5, 180 or whatever, but like, I mean, two, six, three, 250 is not the biggest tight end in the NFL. So he may be a willing blocker. But he's a limited blocker. Now, what I will say is he's going to be a Y tight end. Let me break this down for you. You have Y tight ends, which are in line, hand in the dirt, next to the offensive tackle. That's your traditional tight end that you think about is a Y tight end. But you also have an F tight end, which is like Chickaconquo. Not the biggest guy, more athletic, can move around. Think about Delaney Walker with the uh, San Francisco 49ers. Think about John U. Smith earlier in his career with the Tennessee Titans. Those are move tight ends, all right? And you have guys who can also be like an H-back, which is like a tight end, fullback, combo doggy. Either way, Benson can, can be a wide tight end, but he's probably going to get drafted in the late second round, maybe early third round, and that just doesn't create any value for the Tennessee Titans. So Sanat, to me, is not a good fit for the Titans. The next guy, though, could be a good fit, and it's Theo Johnson from Penn State. Six foot six, 260 pounds. Great size. He's a good athlete for that size as well, but he's a raw player. He definitely needs some development, especially when we're talking about blocking, using his hands, good angles, stuff like that. He's just a guy who needs some more development. Now, with that size and that athleticism and the ability to get even better and the potential that Theo Johnson brings to the table, he could go in the third round. Again, I don't find great value there for the Titans. But if he happens to slip down the board, okay, maybe that would make sense. The next guy is Jatavian Sanders from Texas. And Sanders is a bit of a polarizing prospect. A lot of people thought that Sanders would be tight end too. And maybe some people have him as tight end too. But the buzz for Sanders has dropped a little bit lately. 6'3", 245. He is an athletic guy, but he is not a blocker. He is not someone who's going to be a blocker. He's a move tight end, an F tight end. He is not a good fit for the Titans. They have Chickaconquo. Their best tight end does all of those things already. So it it just doesn't make sense at this point with Chickaconquo, two years left on his rookie deal, to go out and get somebody like Jatavian Sanders. Not a good fit. The next guy is Cade Stover from Ohio State. Six foot three, 247 pounds. And look, Stover has no elite athletic qualities. He looks slow, like he's running in combat boots on film, on tape, on the TV. Um, No elite production. Nothing like that, but he's just technically sound, gets his hands inside when he's blocking, is a willing physical player, a reliable player. Not going to give you much after the catch, but he's strong at the catch point. Like, he's not scared to go up and get the ball in traffic. Like, he does not drop the football. Cade Stover does not drop the football. And let me say this, and I just want to say this. I am an Ohio State fan, born and raised in Ohio, 
live in Ohio currently. If you didn't know that, I, like, I don't know how you didn't. But either way, I watch every Ohio State game. I would not draft Cade Stover. I do not want Cade Stover on the Tennessee Titans. As a Buckeyes fan, people say I have a Buckeye bias. You ain't paying attention then. I do not want Cade Stover. Runs in combat boots. Gives you nothing special. Don't want him. All right, so let me just say that. The next guy is really picking up steam lately. We talk about the buzz going down for Jatavian Sanders. The buzz is going up for Eric All from Iowa. Eric All is six foot four, 250 pounds. Here's the reality, though. He's had two season-ending injuries. Is this guy going to stay healthy? If he couldn't stand up to the beating in college, is he going to be able to do it in the NFL? If he could stay healthy... He's a good athlete. He's a willing blocker. You just need to see more consistency. He's not really a wide tight end either. He's more of a move tight end, F tight end. But I could see Eric All as a guy the Titans may take a chance on late in the draft if he's available. I think that would be a good addition for depth. Now we're getting into an area where stuff like that makes sense, but he still is probably going to go a little bit too high for my liking. The next guy is another guy who's picking up great steam, and it's Jared Wiley out of TCU. Six foot six, 249 pounds. He is a strong receiving tight end. All right. He's a willing blocker as well. He really is. He's willing to block, but he just needs development. Technically speaking with his blocking, he needs to add strength and add weight and add mass onto his body. We talked about Theo Johnson, 6'6", 259. Jared Wiley is 6'6", 249. So that's 10 pounds lighter, which doesn't seem like a lot in the grand scheme of life. But in football, it matters. All that stuff matters. So I like Wiley, and I think he can be a wide tight end, hand in the dirt, end of the line of scrimmage. But he needs some development. All right? So that's a reality. Maybe the Titans take a chance on that. The next guy is Jaheim Bell. And a lot of people like Jaheim Bell, but, I mean, he's Chigakonkwa. That, that, like, 6'2", 240. He's Chigakonkwa. He's a move tight end. He's an F tight end. He's an H back. I don't think that's a good fit for what the Titans need. The Titans need an inline Y tight end that can block, and that's why my favorite tight end of the draft class is Tip Raymond from Illinois. I love Tip Raymond. Six foot four, 270 pounds, 10 pounds heavier than anybody else that we've talked about so far. He is a pure blocker, folks. Look, think about Jeff Swaim. Think about uh, Trevin Wesco. That is the type of tight end that the Titans need. That is what they're looking for. Take Tip Raymond in the sixth round of the draft. I would love that pick for the Titans. He could be your third tight end that gives you a different skill set than the other tight ends. You have Josh Wiley, who could be a receiving tight end. If he adds weight, of course, he could be in between Tip Raymond and Chickaconquo's skill set. He can be your every down number one tight end. And then you have Chickaconquo, who is your move tight end, your matchup tight end, your athletic tight end. And then you have Tip Raymond, who is your pure blocking, hard-nosed, big, physical tight end. Tip Raymond is not a very good wide receiver. What receiver and not wide receiver, but receiver hasn't had a ton of experience catching the ball, hasn't had any production. You can tell when you watch him that he's not a good re uh, receiver in the passing game. But what the Titans need is a pure blocker, and that's why I wanted them to go out and sign like a CJ Uzama or a Jack Stoll or something like that. Unfortunately, Uzama got picked up by the Eagles on Thursday, so he's no longer going to be available. So if there are no good fits in free agency to fill that third tight end role, then go get yourself a tip, Raymond, ladies and gentlemen. Love that fit. The last couple of guys here um, are maybe better fits, but this guy isn't. And it's it's Dallin Holker from Colorado State, 6'3", 234. That's small. He's a good receiver, can't block at all. He's like a, like a slot wide receiver, F tight end, H back type guy. Not a fit, in my opinion, for what the Titans are looking for. The next guy could be a good fit, though, and it's A.J. Barner. From Michigan, six foot six, 250 pounds. So, size, he's a good blocker, excellent blocker coming from Michigan in their run heavy system. Not a good receiver, but he's not terrible either. He's a better receiving option than Tip Raymond, but he's not quite as good of a blocker. But you're kind of doing a trade off there. So, he could make some sense for the Titans as well. And then the last guy I think makes a ton of sense too, and it's Tanner McLaughlin from Arizona, six foot five. 
240. He's more of a refined receiver than Raymond or Barner. And he's not as good of a blocker, but he gives willing effort. And I think if you have a guy with willing effort, put a little more weight on him. Let Bill Callahan teach him some blocking techniques. He's a guy who could play Y, maybe even play a little movement tight end for you. I think the versatility with Tanner there would be a great fit. So let me know down below, out of those tight ends, not Brock Bowers, who would you like the Titans to take? And where would you like them to where would you like them to take him? Now we got to talk about Traylon Burks. All right. Controversy online. Is he out of shape? Is he not? Do we put just total disappointment? And I'll explain why. Titans fans, let's cap off today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. We talked about why the Titans shouldn't and won't take Brock Bowers in the first round of the draft. We talked about the other tight ends in the class that do or don't make sense for the Titans. Now we got to talk about Traylon Burks. The conversation about Traylon Burks has been ignited again from some social media videos that the Tennessee Titans posted and also from some comments that were made by Brian Callahan that were made by Nick Holtz as well. Um, it's just more disappointment, and it goes into what I talked about with Traylon Burke since the start of the offseason, and honestly, since the middle of last season. Before we got dive into that, though, thank you for making the Locked on Titans podcast your first listen each and every day. It's your team every day here on the Locked on Titans podcast. Also want to let you guys know that Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. It's on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. It's called Locked On Sports Today. It's 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts from Locked On, plus coverage of every league from our national shows. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Mock Draft Monday, I'm going to be doing my first round trade down mock draft. I know a lot of you guys can't wait for that. But, so, there was a picture of Traylon Burks. Of course, off-season workouts started this week. And the Titans social media team is posting videos of players walking into the facility and stuff like that. And Traylon Burks had a video of him walking in. He says, what's up, brother? I don't know what else to say. But he, he looks out of shape. He looks a little chubby. I, like, it may be rude to talk about it in this way, but he's a professional athlete, and his conditioning and his uh, fitness level and what shape he is in is critical to his job, okay? It's critical to his job. And I don't know about you guys, but I found it hilarious, the conversation online, because I said from that video, he does look chubby. He looks chubbier than he looked last season. I'm comparing it to what Traylon Burks' face looked like last season. Now, am I a sports science expert? Am I a dietitian? Am I a personal trainer? Am I a doctor? No, I'm not. But I'm sorry, you don't need to be those things to look at someone and say, hey, they look a little heavier than they used to be. Like, do, do you need to do that? Don't you have people in your life? Maybe it's even yourself. Like, dang. I look a little chubbier in the cheeks than I used to. I can say that about myself. You go look at a picture of me at 25, 21. Yeah, I'm a little chubbier in the cheeks right now than I used to be. I don't got to be a dietitian or a personal trainer to know that. Okay? You look at all the people in your life. You can tell them maybe they've gained a little bit of weight. And usually, if you're like me, the weight shows in your face first. When I start losing weight and I get in better shape, my face starts to slim down first, okay? And that is a common thing. So when I say Traylon Burks from that video, you look at his cheeks, you look at his face, looks a little chubbier than he was last year. And if your response to me is, you're not a scientist, you're not a, you don't have to be. I don't have to be a mechanic to know when my brakes are out. I don't have to be a chef to know when my steak is overcooked. Okay, 
Like, you don't have to be a subject matter expert to see obvious things sometimes. And he looks a little chubby. Not only that, but you add that to the fact that Traylon Burks was out of shape when he was a rookie showing up for the Titans. That Traylon Burks has done a poor job of being prepared, knowing his assignment, knowing the plays, knowing where to line up. He has guys younger than him telling him where to line up. And this is my personal opinion. The video of Traylon Burks from last training camp where he's talking about him and NWI making fart jokes, I'm sorry. He's just not a professional player. He's not. He's not mature enough. He doesn't take his job seriously. Like, you look at what he likes to do, and I'm sorry, it just seems obvious that he was a guy who dominated because he was bigger, stronger, and faster than everybody throughout high school and college. He didn't have to practice hard. He didn't have to work out hard. He didn't have to train hard. He gets to the NFL level, and he is not handling it well. So, I also find it funny, I want to throw this in here, that... A lot of people, and there are going to be people who do this in the comments, say, oh, easy for you to say, calling me fat, calling me chubby, you're short crap, for you to say that a professional athlete is chubby, blah, 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 calling me all these names. Well, I sure hope that Traylon Burks isn't looking at me and saying, hey, as long as I'm in better shape than Tyler Rowland, the podcaster, I'm good to go. It looks like that's what he's doing. Oh, I'm in better shape than Tyler Rowland, so I'm doing all right. That's what it looks like. Traylon Burks doesn't need to compare to me. I'm not a professional athlete. He needs to compare to other NFL players. So you could get in the comments and say, oh, you're fat, you're chubby, who are you to say anything? Well, I'm sorry, but being in better shape than me is not a good standard for professional athletes. So you could say that if you want to take shots at me, but just know you're a moron because being in better shape than me is not a good standard. For Traylon Burks. So let me just say that before you get in the comments and disparage me in my shape. Well, I would hope that Traylon Burks is in better shape than I am. And that should not be your bar, okay? Have higher standards for your professional athletes on your favorite football team than being in better shape than podcasters. It's just a silly thing that people say to me to try to make me feel bad. You don't make me feel bad when you say that. I got to tell you, I don't care. All right, Traylon Burks is chubby and out of shape. You telling me I am too. Okay, <laughs> that, great. That doesn't make Traylon Burks better at football. So I care about the Titans, all right? And Traylon Burks not being in shape and constantly being unprepared and not being professional about his job, that hurts the Tennessee Titans. Hurting my feelings or trying to isn't going to help that situation out. So let me say that. It got worse. It got worse for Traylon Burks when the coaches talked about it. Traylon Burks spent 77% of his snaps in college in the slot. So, you get Hopkins on the outside. You get Calvin Ridley to play on the outside. Maybe Traylon Burks can go into the slot where he had any of his success ever. Well, Brian Callahan talked about the slot wide receiver position. He didn't mention Traylon Burks. He said, somebody needs to emerge out of the slot. We have Kyle Phillips, Mason Kinsey, NWI. NWI got mentioned as a slot option before Traylon Burks. That is not good news for Traylon Burks. Okay? Because if they want him to win on the outside consistently, where he has never proven that he can do that, ooh boy, you're not, you're not in a good way. Not in a good way. And let me say this, Nick Holtz, Titans offensive coordinator, sounded like Traylon Burks is in the doghouse. He said this, Traylon's potential is very high. First round pick. You could see the talent. But he's going to have to earn. He's going to have to get what he earns. But he's going to get what he earns is the correct quote. They're saying, you may be a first round pick. You may have talent. But we ain't giving you nothing unless you work for it. Because they know he's not a hard worker. They know. It's no secret. They know that. Now, he said he's been in the building the last two days and and he's been working and he's been, you know, trying to retain information and learn the system. And Rand Carthon said he was working out with DeAndre Hopkins and the all I'm sorry, guys, but you can go to work and not do a good job. Just because you showed up 
to workouts with DeAndre Hopkins. Just because you showed up in the building doesn't mean you're doing a good job when you're there. Don't mistake attendance for production. So, I have said all all season, Traylon Burks is a ghost. You do not do anything in the offseason with the idea that Traylon Burks is a contributor. Ignore Traylon Burks entirely in his existence. He does not exist for this football team. He is a ghost. So, draft two wide receivers. Sign Calvin Ridley. Take Malik Neighbors. Whatever you're going to do, don't think to yourself, oh, well, we have Traylon Burks. Maybe, no. Traylon Burks is a ghost, and it's gotten even worse. And some guys, there are people, this is life, not football, right here. This is life, not football. Some people, when things go bad, they clam up. You know people who, they get beat in basketball. They, oh, I'm taking my ball and going home. Or they're down and they say, oh, I wasn't really trying. I didn't try. Blah, 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 blah. People who clam up and they quit. And there are other people who, when the going gets tough, they get going. They work harder. They grind harder. They overcome adversity. That is the type of person I want. And that is not the type of person Traylon Burks has shown himself to be. So, with that being said, I know a lot of people aren't going to like what I had to say there, and a lot of people are going to disagree with me, and a lot of people are just going to insult me as a way to deal with their disappointment with Traylon Burks. But I don't care, because I'm going to tell you the truth, and I'm going to tell you how I really feel, and I don't care what you think about it. So, with that being said, that is going to do it for today's episode. Yeah, I got fired up on that one, folks. But hey, that's why we're the number one podcast for the Tennessee Titans in the world. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Rowland, and this was Locked on Titans.